Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1220, Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misselbein. In this lecture, we are beginning uh, part 38 of our series, which we want to talk more about the integral test, which we introduced that in the last uh, in the last videos, the last few videos in lecture 37. But I want to continue about that. And in fact, I want to talk about a very special case of the integral test that's special enough that it actually gets its own name. Uh, this is what we'll commonly refer to as the p-test. So first of all, what do you mean by a p-series? A p-series is a series of the form n equals the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n p. So p is some unspecified parameter, and that's why we call it a p-series. And so the p-test tells us that a p-series will be convergent exactly when p is greater than 1, and it will be divergent when p is less than or equal to 1. And so let's see an argument about what's going on here. It turns out this is going to be using the integral test. So what we can see here is that by the integral test, by the integral test, the series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p, uh, this, this is going to be convergent. It's going to be convergent or divergent. exactly exactly when the integral 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx is convergent or divergent. So what I'm trying to say here is that when the integral is convergent, that means the series is convergent. Or when the integral is divergent, that'll mean that the series is divergent. That's what the integral test gives us. So we want to investigate what happens with the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x, 1 over x to the p there. Now this kind of depends on the choice of the choice of p. So some, some considerations. If p is equal to 1, right? That's sort of a special case. The integral from 1 to infinity here, you're going to get 1 over x dx. The antiderivative there will be the natural log of x as you go from 1 to infinity. And that gives you the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of 1. Although the natural log of 1 is equal to 0, there's really no reconciliation with the natural log of infinity. Uh, that's just going to be infinity as well. So infinity minus infinity is infinity. And we see that this integral will be divergent. And so when p equals 1, the p series will be divergent. That's an important case to remember. Now, if p is not 1, then it turns out the integral from 1 to infinity here of 1 over x to the p dp, uh, we could, or dx there, we could write this as the integral from 1 to infinity. We're going to get x to the negative p dx. And so by the power rule, we can use the power rule here. Uh, we're going to raise the power x to the 1, well, negative p plus 1, so we get 1 minus p power. Uh, you have to divide by this coefficient, 1 minus p, as we go from 1 to infinity. Uh, when we plug in 1, that's pretty simple. And we should also just plug in infinity, right? I'm just going to factor out the 1 minus p there. You're going to take this infinity to the 1 minus p uh, minus 1 right there. Now we have to do a little bit better about this infinity to the one minus p because it turns out that not all powers in infinity are, are, are infinite, right? This has a lot to do with whether we have a positive or negative exponent. So if we break this up a little bit further here, if one minus p is a positive number, so it's greater than zero, this would imply that infinity to the one minus p, this is gonna be infinite. You're taking the infinite power of infinity. Now, if one minus p is greater than zero, that implies that one is less than p, uh, like we see here. And so we're gonna get divergence in this situation. Divergence. Combining this with the previous case, we could then say that, oh, when p is less than or equal to one, we get divergence. Now, the other direction, what if, what if one minus p was less than zero? Then you're looking at infinity raised to a negative power. Uh, we, we can think of the reciprocal of one over infinity to the p minus one. In that situation, you actually end up with a zero. That thing would be convergent. 
that thing converges. Uh, now, if, if one minus P is less than zero, that actually says that one is less than P. And so that actually brings us up to the dichotomy we had before. Our series, the P series, the sum of one over N to the P, it'll be converging when P is greater than one like we just saw, and it'll be diverging when P is less than or equal to one. And so it's a very simple test, uh, but it's very, very powerful. We're gonna see more in the future why these P series are so important. Uh, but we can get a very quick check going on right here. If we take the sum as n equals one to infinity of one over n cubed, uh, this is a p-series. We can see that p is equal to three. Three is greater than one, and therefore this series will be convergent. Convergent by the p-test, which the p-test is a special case of the integral test, but we'll, we'll often just refer to it as the p-test. So this is a convergent series, which is pretty neat. That's all that one has to do. That was super slick. No antiderivatives necessary here. Um, if we look at the next one, take the sum where n equals one to infinity of one over the square root of n. Now that one takes a little bit of effort, but not much, right? If you look at the sequence, one over the square root of n, we can realize this as a p sequence. This becomes one over n to the one half. So your p value is equal to one half. That's less than or equal to one. So this would actually be divergent. Uh, this is divergent by the p-test. And so how nice is that? How simple is that? All we have to do is identify the, the parameter P for a P series and we're good to go. Uh, so for a, one third example of this, uh, if we take the series where N equals one to infinity of one over N, this is likewise a P series. In this case, our P value is one. Um, this is often referred to as the harmonic series. The harmonic series is a very important example of, of a series. Um, it is a P series though where P equals one. And so this is the one that kind of sits on the boundary, right? Uh, it, it flips from convergence to divergence as we shift from bigger than one to less than one. But what happens at one? At one, the harmonic series, we are divergent. We saw that before. And so this likewise would be divergent by the p-test. And so determining convergence of a p-series is no harder than this. All one has to do is identify the the it has to just determine the p-value, and then we see whether we're greater than one or less than or equal to one to determine convergence or divergence.